Chelmsford's a fine town, isn't it? I came here for the first time at the weekend and had to come back. And here is our first view of the reason that we're here today, the River Chelmer. I'm going to walk the Chelmer and Blackwater navigation, hopefully reaching Malden. Hopefully down here, just down Navigation Road, is turning that takes me on to the Chelmer and Blackwater navigation and the real beginning of today's adventure. Broccoli Road is what it says on the map. And there's a sofa dumped on the street, which is always a good sign, I think. Not there, that's just a car yard. That sofa was telling me something completely different. Well, we'll give Hill Road south a go. I mean, the map is saying Broccoli Road back there, but there you go. It never surprises me how often the start of the walk takes the longest, sometimes from getting off the train to actually getting to the, the place where you want to start your walk it can take a lot longer than you expect. And it's actually one of the reasons I wanted to come and get on the navigation here rather than follow the Chelmer and cross over the lock is I thought, well, if I can't get over that lock, then I could be stuck on the wrong side of the Chelmer and, I don't know, have to street walk it to get across the navigation. But I'm not sure this is looking particularly promising, actually. <laughs> looking like a new development. Let's give it a go, shall we? It's another reminder of how the real action is often on the outskirts of the town. This is where you find it all happening. And here it is, the Chelmer and Blackwater navigation. Misty day. It's the perfect weather for a walk along this navigation and this river leading out to the coast at Malden. Really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it. This walk was first suggested to me by my friend Andrew Stevens a few years ago, and uh, you know I parked it on the list. But then when I came out with my son at the weekend. It made me realise just how close to Stratford this is. It's 25 minutes on the train from Stratford. If you buy a ticket on the uh, Greater Anglia app, it's like a 10 quid return. So, um, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> so the walk is uh, it's just under 14 miles, like 13.75 miles or something. It's taking me a little bit longer to get out here than I thought. Picked up some food in the station. So it won't be like the River Crouch experience. <laughs> I did have food that day, but I just ate it. <laughs> um, so hopefully, yeah, it's unlikely I'll get to Malden in daylight. Sunset today is about 4.30. So it's uh, unlikely I'll get there before then, but who knows? this field of dried teasels. Today is the 23rd of January and the navigation is over on the other side to my right there. I really love this landscape around North Essex and up into Suffolk. It's got something really beautiful and magical about it. The first bridge of the day, which we've got across. <laughs> I could fall into the river. That'd be a really bad start to the water, wouldn't it? It's quite muddy underfoot. I'm just trying to get my balance here. <laughs> so I don't go skittling into the canal like Bambi. Um, these are navigation and canal walks. Just some of my favourite walks of the last few years, particularly one that sticks in the memory, is the walk along the, uh, the Stort Navigation one Easter, and that was a, such a beautiful walk. 
and the River Crouch Walk last year. Not a navigation, of course. And of course, the Lee navigation is always a favourite walk of mine. So this is going to be wonderful today. Oh, we've got a map here showing us all the locks and stuff. So this is the route. Chelmsford, which is Essex, in case you didn't know. And we came to Springfield Basin and we walked down. And now we've gone under the motorway. I think we're here. I think this must be Barnes Mill Lock. And this is where we're going. I mean, you can see that it's possibly a bit optimistic to get this all done in about four and a half hours. But, you know, we'll give it a go. I do really want to return to the, um, to the River Crouch and the Dengue Peninsula and carry on up to Burning On Crouch and then find a path around the peninsula which also still gets me back to Southminster for a train. That's something I really intend to do the first half of this year hopefully. It's almost impossible to put the camera away because it's such a beguiling landscape. I think the winter is the perfect time to walk along here. This is almost like the landscape of an Italian neorealist film where the river Po runs out to the Adriatic Sea. Interesting looking building over there. I had to hazard a guess, I'd say it's something to do with uh, water or water treatment. And here, just the other side of this brick bridge, we have our first boats. What a wonderful place to live on a narrow boat. It's a lovely old building over there. I wonder if that's the lock keeper's cottage. This is brilliant. I love this. This tree growing directly underneath the motorway. These muddy stretches hit the thighs a little bit. Now, here's something a little bit interesting. Beside the lock there, can you see it? Any guesses before I zoom in? We've got a Second World War pillbox here. Look at this, right beside the canal. Because we're very close to the east coast here, we're at this point I imagine we're only about eight miles away, seven miles away. A very light drizzle now, which perfectly suits the grey skies. I'm having to keep the camera in my pocket. It's not too cold, as you can see I've taken my hat off, exposing my bare head. This brick-lined drainage ditch here running beneath the motorway. I'm sure there's a creature that lives down there. I wonder what his name is. I can just imagine in the summer how this will be a beautiful field of swaying wheat rising beside the navigation. It's about a quarter to one, 12.45. I think I'm probably about a third of the way along the walk. I don't know. I don't really want to check at this stage. I don't want to be too conscious of distance and time and things like that. But uh, I'm making good pace. It's a bit hard going over there. <laughs> it's quite a long stretch of muddy path back there. So it makes your legs a little bit like, oh. But uh, this is good going now underfoot. It's so beautiful just to be out here, you know. This is a great time of year for walking. There's a curious kind of red strip of plants over there. I wonder what they are. The hum of the pylon seen into the landscape.
Now this is the kind of point where you get footpaths striking off across the countryside which are very tempting. Sometimes walking along a towpath can be a little bit challenging at times because you, you, sh you kind of long for variation. But you must stick to your, uh, stick to your guns, stick to your course. I find there's often a pattern to, to walks, like these day walks, these longer walks. Is when you, you, know, you arrive somewhere, maybe it's a town or it's a part of London on the train or on the tube. And so you, you usually spend a little bit too long getting started. Maybe have a little look around, go to the shops to buy some food for the trip ahead. So then you become aware that you've wasted time and you crack on and you go really fast to try and make up for that lost time. Of course, I'm stopping to film and maybe doing a bit too much at the beginning. Again, which makes you kind of push on a bit. And then you hit a point about five or six miles in and that starts to catch up with you a little bit. You start to feel a little bit leggy. You start to slow down again. That's the point I'm at now. The thing that comes next, of course, is a repeat of that cycle. <laughs> when you, you, get, you see that there's not that much daylight left and you've still got quite a long way to go and you pick up your pace. And normally that last mile is the fastest mile. That's normally the four mile an hour mile. This walking where your feet are just sliding all over the place. And you can't walk in a straight line. And you're slipping and sliding on this mud. It gets so tiring. Been like this for at least a mile or two now and my legs are starting to feel quite tired hope it uh, dries out a little bit further along i just stopped for a rest on this bench by little Bado lock and the sun's come out it's beautiful i've got plenty of provisions with me today um i've got, I've got a giant oat bar, I've got a bar of chocolate, I've got uh, an M&S ham and cheese and pickle sandwich and I've already eaten like two sort of um, sausage rolls as well so no shortage of food today and I've got plenty of water. So I think I have to cross that bridge there and walk on the other side of the navigation from here. Somebody's actually getting down into the water on a paddle board which I um, in, in awe of that person. We've got a little tributary of the Chelma here. Perhaps it's a meander. The rain may have stopped and the sun has come out, but the mud has got even deeper. This is uh, absurd levels of mud here. This part of the country is known for being particularly flat so the level of mud shouldn't come as an enormous surprise but it is hard work <laughs> and I just went flying over there suddenly lost my concentration and I just went sideways luckily I wasn't that close to the water but um yeah this is slowing me down quite considerably so chances of getting to Malden in daylight pretty slim I would say it's about quarter to two now sat on the bench for maybe a little bit too long but it was so lovely There's quite a lot of shooting going on over there I'll level with you because like we're friends you come on all these walks with me is when I'm walking on really muddy paths my boots are getting absolutely caked in mud the thing that I'm most worried about and the thing that's going through my mind is this is severely reducing my pub options at the end of the walk I probably can't go in a nice pub if my boots absolutely caked in mud and I've got mud all up my trousers. That's actually what I'm thinking about at that point. <laughs> I'm not that bothered about walking on muddy paths. I am bothered about getting a nice pint at the end of a walk though. <laughs> and here we have some more boats. I'm guessing we're coming up to a little marina. These look more like pleasure craft. And narrow boats. A stretch of boats with humorous names. That's a really nice looking narrow boat though, isn't it? We've got to walk right past this swan. They can be a little bit gnarly if they feel like it. Yeah. 
should I take the path of least resistance? Here we are at Paper Mill Lock, which is quite delightful. There's a little cafe here. And we've got a kind of proper path here, which I must admit I'm very pleased to see. Another really delightful little bridge over there. I think now we're staying on this side of, of the navigation for at least a little bit longer. So, see where we are there by the paper mill bridge. Look at that place on the other side of the uh, on the other side of the canal. It's it's called uh, Maltham in Parvo. That's a name and a half, isn't it? We're now back to the muddy paths again. Glorious looking countryside up there. You can start to feel the presence of the Blackwater Estuary, which is where we're heading. And that really is the landscape of the Essex Serpent, Sarah Perry's brilliant book. And I mentioned it on the walk out along the River Crouch last year. It's such an atmospheric, evocative book set in this landscape further out along the estuary, of course. Highly recommended. The navigation feels much wider here as we're moving towards the, the main mouth of the estuary down at Malden. And the other cultural reference point for me out here along around Malden and along the estuary is a really wonderful film called uh, The Lawless Heart, which stars Bill Nehe, Tom Hollander, Douglas Henshaw, and that's set and filmed out along the estuary. And I remember seeing that, I think actually when I was living in Modena, so it's 20 odd years ago, 20 years ago. And it's such a strong impression. The bridges of Essex County and make that as a pitch to National Geographic. And the countryside around the canal is so beautiful. I mean, this is like the Somme here. This is ridiculous. And of course, Detectorists is set up up here in North Essex, the brilliant BBC well, I was going to call it a sitcom, it's a comedy drama, isn't it, really? Mackenzie Crook, Toby Jones, it's brilliant. It's the best thing on TV. I was watching an episode last night, although I did look it up, and it is filmed in Suffolk, actually, near the village of Framlingham. So I might do that as a video in the summer. That would be great, wouldn't it? Go up there and do the, go to the locations in Detectorists. Yes, let's do that. Remind me. through some quite, well, I'd say quite deep water, deeper than you'd want to wade through. You can see down here how wet this field is. Of course, this is a real land of the Anglo-Saxons, the East Saxons, Essex, which was also the, the scene of many sort of furious battles against the Vikings and the Danes, the Battle of Malden of 991 is a particularly notable battle. A pair of swans out in the field here. I don't know if you can see it, but poking through the trees there is a very old looking church. So this is Alting Church, which has been here since 1150. And apparently it was once a very sort of important place of pilgrimage, ranking alongside Walsingham. So it's just coming up to, uh, to three o'clock. Just passing through Alting, which is roughly where I thought I'd be at this time of day. So it's, you know, we're making decent time. 
lots more slipping and sliding around on the sort of muddy sort of angular path there. Very hard going, difficult to stay upright. The worry for me is it does take its toll on my uh, sort of dodgy left knee that I had surgery on. It starts to, you know, it starts to ache a bit, which is all right, but if it starts to lock up, I've got a problem. Well, actually, I needn't have gone around that field there because I actually need to go over that footbridge, which means going back through this swamp. Yeah, here we go. And that's my path there up ahead. Because it's about half three, I'm having to eat on the go, I haven't got time to stop and eat. There must be a ton of mythology connected with the River Chelmer. I thought that was a bridge, but actually it's just a, a couple of pipes crossing the river. I'm aware that I've used the words river, canal and navigation kind of interchangeably as we've gone along. <laughs> it's partly due to my own confusion about the extent to which this is the Chelmer or just a kind of a straightened section of the Chelmer like you get with the Lee navigation of the River Lee in parts as well. But um, this is actually, I mean, this is the River Chelmer, so it's the river. But it's also, if you look on the, if you look on the map, this is marked both as the River Chelmer in these reaches and the, uh, the Blackwater and Chelmer navigation. So it is both the river and the navigation, the canal and the river also. I hope that clears that up. <laughs> Now moving into that last hour of daylight, it's been uh, mostly a fairly kind of gloomy day, so we probably won't get much of a sunset. But there's still something special about this time of day. I feel that this is the time of day when the spirits come alive along the riverbank. I wonder if the Chelmer has a river goddess or god. The rivers in Benaranovich is the rivers of London. misty stretch of the river here. If the Chelmer does have a deity, this is where they reside. And here we have another really fine kind of public utility over there. Great big red brick monolith. What a wonderful bit of architecture. Sight, isn't it? A swan in the river, the reeds behind. Yes, here we are here. I think we have to carry on along the Langford Cut. Just coming into Malden now. And it's about uh, 20 past four. So there the Chelmer runs free of the navigation into Malden into the Blackwater estuary and then out to sea. And there to the right is the Blackwater, the River Blackwater. I'm really quite pleased to have got here in the last of the light. It's quite good going because I started about an hour later than I thought and even under my original plans I was anticipating doing this last stretch in the pitch black actually. I was quite prepared to do the last hour in darkness. So this is a huge bonus and I'm quite pleased to have done it with that terrible <laughs> ten, 10 miles at least of slipping and sliding and twisting my ankle and twisting my knee in, the, in those, that deep mud along that path. Now it looks like it's a quite a reasonable path. <laughs> so the light's about to fade now. It's just about to get dark and I'm coming into the edge of Malden. So after the peace and quiet of the riverbank, you can now hear the traffic making its way around the edge of the town. It's always a signal that your walk is near its end when you hear that sound, the white noise of the arterial road. So at this point here by this footbridge, is where I think I'm going to turn away from the navigation now it goes in a loop round to Haybridge Basin, which I believe 
is really worth doing, but um, it will take me away from the town and from a bus back to Chelmsford. So I'm going to head back towards the River Chelmer and see uh, a part of the Blackwater Estuary, hopefully. The Tesco's extra on the edge of town. And this is the path that hopefully takes me back to the Chelmer. So here's the last stretches of the Chelmer before it runs into the Blackwater Estuary. You see how big and grand it is, it's flowing quite fast actually. Unfortunately it's too dark to actually see anything along the quay here but I'm going to have a little wander along. I think this is the last point where we'll get any light here along the estuary. This is about as far as long as we can go for now. Which is a shame because over here in the darkness you can probably just see the outlines of the sails on the sail barges. Well, thank you for joining me on that magical walk along the, uh, the Chelmer and Blackwater navigation down here to Malden. It feels like this is an unfinished journey though. It feels like I need to come back and walk along the Blackwater estuary all the way out to the sea. So consider this part one of a walk. Anyway, I'll see you on the next walk, wherever that may be.